Hi pen friends, this is Sarah. Today I'm going to be doing a review and comparison of the only two stipula pens that I have in my collection. This um, video was requested by a subscriber, so thank you very much to everyone who's subscribed to my channel and left comments. Um, so at the top here, I've got a Stipula Etruria Cracked Ice Revival Deluxe 991, and below it I have a Stipula Faceted Etruria Black and Green, and they're both limited editions that were made for Chatterley Luxuries, and they're not in production anymore. Um, they're pretty difficult to find. Um, the Cracked Ice was made, um, I guess, 38 of these, and the um, Black and Green, there were 18. So I'm just going to first talk about the differences um, between these two pens, and then I'm going to talk about the materials that were used for um, the bodies of the pens and then I'm going to do a writing sample. All right, so I found eight main differences between these two styles of Etruria. Um, the most obvious one is probably that this one is faceted, and that keeps it from rolling around, and I really enjoy how the light um, reflects off of the facets. So this one has a more rounded shape. Um, another difference is that when they're um, capped, the, the faceted one looks a little, it's a little bit longer, just a tiny bit longer. Hopefully I have the camera set up so that you can see that it's just a tiny bit longer here. But it's not because the body of the pen or the cap is longer. It's because of how the cap um, screws on to the body. So if I take the caps off, you can see that the caps are the same length. And you can see that the pens are also the same length, but this Etruria, um, the more normal design of the Etruria, has the cap threads here, and on the faceted Etruria, the cap threads are here at the front. So um, when you put the caps on, since they're going onto the pen in different places, that um, creates the slight difference in length of the capped pen. Um, I find the grip of the faceted Etruria to be a little bit more comfortable. And also, it seems to be a little bit more concave. And so I, I enjoy the feel of that grip a little bit more than the regular Etruria. Um, so that's another difference. So, so far we've got the facets, the length when posted, and the grips are a little bit different. Um, also, I'm going to put these caps back on. Um, the end of the cap, the very top of the cap, the regular Etruria is a little bit um, more bulbous, or a little. the diameter is a little bit bigger than the faceted Etruria, so the faceted one comes to a little bit more of a point at the top. And I enjoy that shape, that more sleek shape. Um, also, you can see that 
the trim rings are different and I prefer these um, than they're they're both sterling silver um, on the regular well this one is called the 991 trim because it's different from the regular Arturia the regular Arturia just has the um, band with the leaves and then the the 991 adds just this um, thin bit of the rings that are above and below the central ring and on this one those rings just those rings have been ruthenium plated um, to make it pop a little bit more I guess but these are all sterling silver trims and clips um, so what else um, the engravings of the brand stipula and made in Italy and the um, limited edition numbers they're in a slightly different font. Actually, Stipula is the same font, but on the Fast Editoria, for some reason, there's no dot on the I. I don't know if that's the same with all of the, um, see that? I don't know if that's the same with all of the Fast Editorias. And this Made in Italy is just a slightly different font than the Made in Italy on the other one. I don't know if I can... There's stipula on this one. And also on the regular Etruria, sorry, my rabbit is making noises. Um, stipula is above Made in Italy, and on the faceted one, stipula and Made in Italy are beside each other. So that's another small difference. Um, also, this isn't something about the physical pen, but when the pens are named, um, sometimes the faceted Etruria will have a different name for the material of the pen than the regular Etrurias. For example, there is an Etruria that is called Fiasole, and then in the faceted shape they call that same color Champagne. Alright, so I think that I've Oh yeah, so I wanted to mention that there's actually a Etruria that's just called the 991, and maybe that was the first one that they made with these extra rings um, above and below the cat band, I don't know. It's a brown celluloid with pearl flakes in it, and it's a beautiful celluloid. Um, but, so that pen is just called the 991, but then after that I think they called this style of trim ring the 991 style trim ring. So there's some other um, different materials made that have that kind of um, ring on it. Okay, um, so those are the differences between those pens. Um, both of mine were made exclusively for Chatterley Luxuries, and I don't know, um, Chatterley has made a lot of pens with, with um, Stipula, and I don't know if they'll be making more. I really do enjoy um, the choices that Chatterley has made for the materials of their pens. Um, and Chatterley made three different Etrurias with this cracked ice material. Um, so I have the one that's called Revival Deluxe 991 LE. Um, they also made one in the faceted Etruria with this cracked ice material that's really beautiful. Um, there were only eight of those made, I think, so that's a very rare pen. And they also made a Revival LE <coughs> that had a titanium nib and it had a cartridge converter. So both of mine, <coughs> sorry, my throat is bothering me. Um, both of mine have piston fills. So you turn the end of the pen to and put, it, put the nib in the ink and fill it up that way so that the body is all filled with ink. Um, but the Re Revival LE with the cracked ice 
actually had a cartridge converter, so it held less ink. Um, so the faceted Etrurias are usually made in really small batches, so they're difficult to find. The only one I could find at this time for sale was on Stilograph Corsani, their website, and it was the faceted Etruria and the alter ego celluloid. Um, so you, you would be finding them on the used market nowadays. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about the differences in the materials of these two pens and also of other um, stipula Etrurias. So they've made stipula Etrurias in a lot of different materials, such as resin, wood, and this one here is a cellulose acetate, and this is a celluloid, which is also known as cellulose nitrate. Um, the pens in what's called true celluloid, which is the cellulose nitrate, are becoming harder to find because that material is really difficult to work with and it takes a long time to make. But it is my favorite material for a fountain pen. Um, the depth and the shine of the material and the way that it feels are really um, outstanding to me. Um, so First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this material, and then we'll go into celluloids. Um, so the um, this material was made by Mazzuccelli, M-A-Z-Z-U-C-C-H-E-L-L-I. Um, they're an Italian company that makes um, mostly uh, the celluloid um, acetate, or cellulose acetate. Um, and I think they, their main market is for eyeglass rims, um, but they also sold a lot of famous materials for um, pens. So this one they called their quartzite sebloplast. Um, they, I think that was their trade trademark or their, the name of that they called their cellulose acetates was sebloplast. Um, so you can find other ones such as the Schaefer Jungle, Schaefer Jungle sebloplast. Um, and this material has a really beautiful depth and shine also, um, but it takes less time to make this material. It has to cure for several weeks, um, but it's not um, as difficult to make. And so this material is being made currently, whereas I don't think that cellu cellulo celluloids are being made anymore. Um, and that's because celluloid takes many months or more to cure, and it's made out of a highly flammable material that can also be um, bad for the health of the people who are um, exposed to it on a daily basis. So um, the main, the way that you can tell the difference if you don't know for sure whether you have a celluloid or a cellulose acetate is if you smell inside the cap um, celluloid has a very distinctive smell, and that's because the main ingredient in it, or one of the ingredients, is camphor. And camphor has a smell that's kind of spicy, it's similar to like rosemary or eucalyptus or menthol. Um, it's, it comes from the wood of the camphor laurel, which is a large evergreen tree found in Asia. Um, it's a waxy, flammable, transparent material, which is why the material has so much depth and gives it that feel. And also, um, when camphor can be readily absorbed through your skin, 
and it stimulates your nerve endings, producing a warm sensation when, or when you rub it, or a cool sensation when you touch it gently. Um, I found a lot of these facts on Wikipedia if you want to know more about camphor, but um, it can also be synthesized out of turpentine, and it's used, it has been used um, as an alternative to mothballs for um, keeping moths away, and it's toxic to insects, it's antimicrobial, and the Egyptians used it in mummification. Um, so people working in a factory with camphor a lot um, when they were inhaling it, inhaling that smell a lot, could become sick from from the camphor fumes. Um, and also, it was known to catch fire easily. So a lot of factories um, had big fires because of their celluloid catching fire. Um, so that's why I love to collect these pens because they're just um, a material that's not really used anymore. Um, and a lot of, like both of these materials were made in Italy. I don't really know whether there were celluloids made outside of Italy, but it seems like most of them were made in Italy. Um, all right, let's see. Um, now I think I'm going to, oh, I just wanted to say that a lot of different pen companies will use the same materials, um, both the cellul cellulose nitrates and the cellulose acetates. Um, so you can find pens made out of these same materials by Tibaldi. This one was originally, this material was originally for Tibaldi. And um, Bexley will make a lot of pens using these materials. Um, Montegrappa, I don't know. There's, there's several, mostly Italian companies, that will use these materials. So if you like the material, you can look around for um, different pens made with that same material. All right, so um, now I'm going to do a little writing sample. Um, the craft dice one I have um, with a fine nib, and they're both 14 karat, 14 karat nibs. This one is fine. So this is the stipula. craft ice and I find that these nibs have a good amount of bounce and flexibility I really enjoy using them um, okay This is the stipula faceted Petruria. That was my fault. I lifted the pen a little bit. Um, green and black. And oops. Sometimes these pens will have a little bit of a hard start, but since the net nib is a little bit flexible, you just, um, you know, press it down to the page to get the ink flowing again. So actually, this um, green and black faceted Etruria, I have a medium nib in it, <clears throat> and I find that the fine nib and the medium are very similar in width but I enjoy both of them. I would say that maybe the medium is more on the fine side. Okay, so I really enjoy both looking at these pens and writing with them. And um, I wanted to mention for the craft dice, I have Tibaldi blue ink in that. And for the faceted Etruria, 
I have Robert Oster Bronze ink. Thank you for joining me, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thanks a lot. Bye.